the next topic in motion is graphical representation graphical representation of linear motion linear motion so i'll discussing graphical representation of linear motion or rectilinear motion you can say or motion along a straight line we will try to analyze three different types of graphs so this graphical representation will contain displacement time graph displacement time graph velocity time graph and acceleration time graph because these are the three parameters that are associated with the description of linear motion or motion along a straight line because we are studying motion along a straight line and the direction of motion is not changing when an object is moving along a straight line so displacement time graph and distance time graph will mean the same thing so displacement time graph or distance time graph will always refer to the same type of graph similarly velocity time graph can be called as speed time graph and acceleration time graph will be usually called as acceleration time graph so nothing new regarding this acceleration time graph so remember that as we are discussing motion in a straight line that's why displacement time or distance time graph are the same and velocity time graph or speed time graph are the same because the direction of motion is not changing at all as the object is continuously moving along the straight line so let us start our discussion with the displacement time graph the displacement time graph means that the values of displacement are plotted along the y axis and the values of time intervals or time instants are plotted along the x axis so x axis will represent the time instants and y axis will represent the displacement at different instants of time so you can call the y axis as the displacement axis also and the x axis as the time axis also now in the motion of a body along a straight line there are different situations that we need to discuss regarding each of the different graphs so the first example is suppose the body is stationary the body is at rest the body is not moving at all or it is stationary it means that at different instants of time the body is at the same position it has not changed its position at all and so it is at rest so if i consider a straight line along which the body is moving and suppose its starting point is the point o and if at different instant of time suppose after t equal to 1 second the body remains at the position o if after t equal to 2 seconds the body remains at the position o after t equal to 5 seconds also we observe that the body is at the same position o and throughout at different time intervals the body is at the same position o it means that the object is stationary the displacement is zero in that situation the displacement time graph will be a straight line that will coincide with the time axis because at each time interval the body is at the same position at its starting point so this point from where it starts must might be called as the origin the position from which the object starts its journey might be called as the origin or the reference point reference point 
actually this is the position from which the time instants are being noted down. So that's why it is called as the origin of the reference point. But this origin need not be the origin of the xy graph. So suppose this is the point O or the origin of the xy graph. And suppose this origin and this origin coincides. Then if the object remains at that origin throughout at every time interval or every time instant, then the graph is a straight line that will coincide with the time axis. So it will be a straight line that will coincide with the time axis. I am just showing it by a bold line that is coinciding with the time axis or the x axis. So in this situation, this is you can say the displacement time graph is a straight line. which will coincide with the time axis. That means the axis along which the different time intervals are being plotted. Now the situation might be a bit different. The body is stationary, it is at rest, but the observation point has shifted to somewhere else. Suppose this is the position P at which we initially saw the object was present. The object was initially present at the point O and from there on at different time intervals the object remains at the position P. Then this OP will be called as the initial distance of the object from the reference point and then if the object remains at rest it will be a straight line parallel to the time axis. The displacement time graph will be a straight line parallel to the time axis and the initial distance of the object from the reference point is say 5 cm or 10 cm whatever it is. Then this will be a straight line which is parallel to the time axis. The difference in the different in the both the cases is only that the choice of the reference point has shifted. And this is a straight line parallel to the time axis. It means that the object is at some distance from the reference point and the situation where the graph coincided with the time axis, it means that the object was at the reference point. In both situations, it is a straight line parallel to the time axis. The next, if the object is moving with a uniform velocity, that means equal displacements are occurring at equal time intervals. So the next situation will be the displacement time graph for uniform velocity. The velocity is uniform. That means equal displacements have occurred in equal time intervals. In that case, the displacement time graph will be a straight line inclined to the x-axis. Suppose this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Along x-axis we have different time intervals. So before, suppose this is the reference point or the starting point. If the velocity is uniform, then it will be a straight line inclined to the time axis. Now, if again, like the previous situation, if the object has started its journey from some different point P with respect to this origin, then the graph will be somewhat like this. But both will mean the same thing. Suppose the graph is in this manner. Displacement time. This is the origin. Or this is the reference point from which we are measuring different distances and the object was at some different point P with respect to the origin of the reference point. So this is the straight line inclined to the time axis. This is also a straight line inclined to the time axis. 
In both cases, it represents that the velocity is uniform, which means that the acceleration is zero also. It also means that acceleration is zero because equal displacements occur at equal time intervals, which means that the velocity is uniform, the motion is uniform, the velocity is constant, and so acceleration is zero. Now, from the velocity time graph, we can calculate, sorry, from the displacement time graph, we can calculate the velocity. The slope of this displacement time graph will produce what is called as velocity. So this you have to remember, slope or gradient. Slope or gradient of displacement time graph. instant of time t1 the velocity is suppose v1 at some different instant of time say t2 the velocity is say v2 so if you construct the right angle triangle suppose this point let me name it as A. Let me name this point as B. And if I draw the right angle triangle, suppose this point is M, then the slope of this graph will be the height of the right angle triangle by its base. That is BM divided by am. Now, as I have told, the slope of the graph is the velocity. So, this slope can be written as the velocity v, which will be equal to, sorry, displacement, I wrote it as v2 and v1. Let me call it as y1 and y2, because the values are along the y-axis. And these are along the time axis of t1 and t2. So, at time t1, the displacement is y1 and time t2 the displacement is y2. So what is bm? Definitely bm will be this much that is y2 minus of y1. So this is obviously y2 minus y1. And this am will be obviously t2 minus t1. So in this case you will get it as y2 minus y1 divided by t2 minus t1. So this is the technique of calculating the slope. If in any problem different time intervals and the corresponding displacements are provided and the graph, displacement time graph happens to be a straight line that is inclined to the time axis, you can consider any time interval and any pair of displacement and from that you can construct a right angle triangle in this manner and calculate the slope of the graph. The slope of the graph will give you the velocity. Now, the slope can be either positive or it can be negative. If the slope is positive, it means that the object is moving away from the starting position or away from the reference point. However, if the slope is negative, then it will mean that the object is coming back towards the starting point or towards the reference point or towards the origin. So, the slope can be positive or negative. Positive and negative slope does not, does not indicate that the velocity is increasing or decreasing. For displacement time graph, if the, if the slope is positive, then the object is moving away from the origin or the initial position. And if the slope is negative, then the object is definitely coming back towards its initial point or the starting point or the origin, whatever you say. So, if the slope is negative, the graph might be something like this. Suppose, 
for this part of the journey, the slope is positive, and for this part of the journey, the slope is negative. So, in this situation, the slope is positive, and in this situation, the slope is negative. Negative, and the slope is positive here. So this is the displacement time graph. The velocity is uniform. Here the slope is positive means that the object is again moving from the initial point and the slope is negative means the object is coming back towards the initial point. So the information that you can get from the displacement time graph is that the slope of the displacement time graph will provide you the Velocity. Next, if the motion is uniformly accelerated motion, if the motion is uniformly accelerated, that means the velocity is variable and there is some acceleration. Then the displacement time graph will be a curve. The displacement time graph will be a curve curve of this manner or whatever it is will represent that the velocity is variable that means there is some amount of acceleration. Now again this might be also of this form the difference in both the situations is that in this situation the object has started from the origin or the reference point in this situation the object has started its journey from a point which is somewhat away from the reference point but both mean the same thing that there is a acceleration the velocity is variable but the slope of this graph is very difficult to calculate because the velocity is variable the slope of this graph will provide you the instantaneous velocity so if you try to calculate the slope of this graph you have to choose two time intervals which are sufficiently close and from that if you try to calculate the slope you will get a tangent at a given point suppose we want to know we want to try we want to calculate the velocity at this point so at this point you have to draw a tangent to the graph the slope of the tangent will give you the value of the velocity so if the acceleration is constant that means the velocity is variable then obviously the displacement time graph will be curved the curve will be indicating a positive slope or a negative slope but however for a curve in order to calculate the slope at any particular point of the graph we have to draw a tangent and then the slope of the tangent will give you the instantaneous velocity. The slope of the tangent will give you the instantaneous velocity. Tangent at a point on this curve will give you the instantaneous velocity. Velocity. Next, we shall discuss about velocity time graph. The next topic is velocity time graph. So, again, we shall consider three cases. The first case is that the object is at rest or the object is stationary. Now, the object is stationary means the velocity is zero, definitely. So, we are plotting velocity along the y-axis and the corresponding time intervals along the x-axis. At every instant of time, we have a velocity that we have plotted along the y-axis. So, if the object is stationary, then its velocity is zero. It means that the graph will be a straight line that will coincide with the time axis. The velocity at different instants is 
So this will be a straight line that coincides with the coinciding with the time axis. velocity is zero, definitely acceleration is also zero. Now, if the velocity is uniform, uniform velocity means the velocity is constant, which means that there is no acceleration. In that case, the velocity time graph will be a straight line which will be parallel to the time axis. So, the velocity time graph will be a straight line Sorry, it will be a straight line exactly parallel to the time axis. So this is parallel to the time axis. Time axis means the x axis along which the values of different time instants have been plotted. The velocity is constant throughout the journey. The velocity is uniform, the motion is uniform, and the acceleration is zero. The third situation arises that the motion is a uniformly accelerated motion. Before saying that, the velocity can be positive or negative also because positive and negative values with respect to any vector quantity represents their direction. So if the velocity is say 5 meter per second plus 5 meter per second it means that the object is moving away from its starting point or away from the origin or away from the reference point but if velocity is minus 5 meter per second that means the value or the magnitude is 5 the minus sign indicates that the object is coming back towards its initial position or reference point in that case the velocity time graph will be a straight line parallel to the time axis but it will be along the negative y axis. So this to represent uniform velocity but this is negative velocity and this represents positive velocity. Because velocity is a vector quantity. The object is moving away from the initial point or the starting point and the object is coming back towards the starting point. So this is the difference, but both represent uniform velocity, that means they are straight lines parallel to the time axis. Next, if the velocity is varying, that means there is some amount of acceleration, then the velocity time graph will be a straight line inclined to the time axis. So the next situation is that of an uniformly accelerated motion. That means the acceleration is constant. Uniformly accelerated motion. The velocity is increasing by equal amounts in equal time intervals. That means whatever acceleration we have, the acceleration is constant throughout the journey. Because remember the equations that we have derived were all related to uniformly accelerated motion. The acceleration is constant, that means the velocity is increasing or decreasing at a uniform rate. So in that case, the velocity time graph will be a straight line inclined to the time axis. The x axis, this is the y axis around which velocity has been plotted. Now, there are many variations of this graph. Suppose the graph is passing through the origin and it is inclined to the time axis. It means that the object has its initial velocity zero. This represents the initial velocity was zero. Initial velocity was zero. And then it accelerated and its velocity increased at a constant rate. Now, the slope of this graph, the slope of this graph or slope of any velocity time graph 
will provide the value of acceleration. Slope of velocity time graph. is the acceleration, is the value of the constant acceleration. And the third information that we get is the area between the sketch, that means the area between the straight line that is inclined to the time axis and the time axis itself will give you the displacement or the distance covered. Area between the graph the sketch that we have drawn, area between the graph and the time axis, time axis is equal to the displacement and in some cases we can calculate the distance also, displacement or distance you can say. Now while calculating displacement we have to consider positive and negative values but in case of distance we have to consider the positive values only because displacement is obvious vector quantity and distance is a scalar quantity. So that we will take examples and show. So for the time being, suppose the journey was noted up to a certain time t, suppose. Then the area of this graph will give you the distance covered in time interval t. So area between the graph and the time axis will give you the displacement or the distance covered. Another variation of this graph might be the graph happens to be a straight line inclined to the time axis but it is not starting from the origin it is starting from somewhere else. It means that the object had some initial velocity. Suppose this is the initial velocity u then you cannot say that the initial velocity was zero. So initial velocity had some value u, say for example 2 meter per second initially and thereon it accelerated and velocity increased at a constant rate. So this graph and this graph are similar, you can say they both represent uniformly accelerated motion. In this case the initial velocity is zero but in this case the initial velocity is not zero. Both are velocity time graphs. As we have discussed in the displacement time graph, the slope of this graph is positive, slope of this graph is also positive and both represent the value of the acceleration. If the slope is negative, it will represent retardation because the acceleration is such that the velocity is decreasing with respect to time. So the negative slope in this case will indicate that the velocity is uniformly decreasing with respect to time and so there is a constant retardation. So here the slope is positive. Positive slope. So you can say that the acceleration in this case is greater than zero. In this case also the slope is positive and the acceleration is greater than zero. However, if the graph would have been like this, Suppose the velocity time graph is of this form, suppose. Then the slope of this graph is negative. Slope is negative. So it means there is some amount of retardation and you can say the acceleration is less than zero. There is some amount of retardation. The velocity has decreased at a constant rate. And again, if you calculate the area of this graph, you will get the displacement that has occurred. If you calculate the slope, you will get the retardation. Next, we shall discuss the acceleration time graph. Before doing so, the velocity time graph we showed for a uniformly accelerated motion, but if 
the velocity time graph is a curve before saying a point is noteworthy. Suppose the velocity time graph is a curve, is somewhat a curve, a curve motion. Then, sorry, it is not a curve motion. The curve graph is curve itself, but we are discussing motion along a straight line. Say the velocity time graph is a curve, then it means a non-uniform acceleration. Non-uniform acceleration. The acceleration is not constant. That is, acceleration is not constant. It's not constant. And in this case, we have no specific equation to represent the motion. In that case, we have to consider instantaneous velocity, the velocity at any given instant of time. If the velocity time graph is a curve, then at any point on that graph, if we draw a tangent, the slope of the tangent will give the instantaneous acceleration. So at this point, if we draw a tangent, say the point P, at the point P we draw a tangent, then the slope of this tangent, of the tangent, at P is the, is the instantaneous acceleration. Acceleration. So this might be the case. If it is retardation, then this graph will have a decreasing slope and the graph will be a curved line which will be more or less bent towards the time axis. Now this graph is bent away from the time axis, so you can say there is an acceleration, but in case of retardation, the graph will be bent towards the time axis. But anyhow, the information is that if the velocity time graph is a curve, then it represents a non-uniform acceleration. That means the acceleration is no more constant. The velocity is varying at a non-uniform rate. So next, we discuss what is acceleration time graph. If the object is stationary, it is at rest, its velocity is zero, definitely its acceleration is zero. So if the body is stationary, if the body is stationary, then its acceleration time graph, acceleration along the y-axis and time along the x-axis, the acceleration time graph is again a straight line that will coincide with the time axis. It is a straight line that will coincide with the time axis because stationary means velocity is also zero, acceleration is also zero. If the body is moving with a constant velocity or uniform motion or uniform velocity, uniform velocity, then again the acceleration is zero. So in both the situations you will get the same type of graph. That is a straight line that will coincide with the time axis. Because the acceleration is zero if the velocity is constant. The velocity is zero, the acceleration is zero. If the velocity is constant, then also the acceleration is zero. In both the situations, you will get an acceleration time graph, will be a straight line that will exactly coincide with the time axis. So the same graph has two different meanings. Either the velocity is zero, the object is absolutely stationary, or there was a velocity which was constant throughout the journey, that means the acceleration is zero. Now, if the acceleration is constant, third situation is uniformly accelerated motion or the acceleration is constant. That means there is a non-zero acceleration throughout the journey. Uniformly accelerated motion. The acceleration has a constant value throughout the journey. So then the acceleration time graph will be a straight line parallel to the time axis. It will be a straight line parallel to the time axis. 
if the motion is uniformly accelerated, that means the acceleration is constant, then the acceleration time graph, acceleration time graph will be a straight line parallel to the time axis. This is a straight line which is parallel to the time axis. Now, if the motion is uniformly retarded motion, then this graph will be along the negative y axis. So, if the motion is uniformly retarded motion, uniformly retarded, then the acceleration time graph will be a straight line parallel to the time axis, but that graph will be along the negative y axis. So this represents the constant retardation. This value represents the constant retardation throughout the journey. Now, if the velocity of an object is varying in an irregular manner, then the acceleration time graph will be a curved one and those cannot be represented with simple form of mathematics but still if the acceleration time graph is a curved one it will mean that the velocity is varying in a very irregular manner. Now let us draw the three graphs, three types of graphs that we have studied for a motion <coughs> for object which is falling under gravity that means for a freely falling body. So suppose an object is dropped from a specific height, then it will be called as a freely falling body. When it is dropped from a certain height, it falls under the gravitational force and so its acceleration will be the value of the acceleration due to gravity that is g. So in that case, you can draw all the three graphs. So let us start with the displacement time graph. Because the freely falling body is accelerating under the effect of the Earth's gravitational pull, the displacement time graph will be a curve the velocity time graph will be a straight line inclined to the time axis because the velocity is increasing at a uniform rate so the velocity will be a straight line which is inclined to the time axis and because the object was dropped from a certain height its initial velocity was zero so the velocity time graph will remain inclined to the time axis but it will pass through the origin as its initial velocity was zero. It is just released from rest. So its initial velocity is zero. And because the freely falling body is under the effect of Earth's gravitational pull, its acceleration is constant. And so the acceleration time graph will be a straight line parallel to the time axis. So this is the acceleration time graph and the value of the acceleration will be equal to g where g is the earth's gravitational acceleration and it is approximately 9.8 meter per second square. So this will be the constant acceleration. Similarly, if an object is released with a particular velocity, it is if it has some initial velocity then the velocity time graph will start, not start from the origin, it will start from some different point on the velocity axis because it, it will have that initial velocity. But whenever we are telling free falling body, it means that it has been dropped and its initial velocity is zero. It is just released from a point. 